are back in full force. Thank you guys for the hosts already. I appreciate that. And I hope everyone's day is awesome. You hear me opening bags. Yeah, I just came in. I was bringing some veg in to use. You're like, what is Kate up to back there? <laughs> what is she getting into? Imagine just doing a stream with like a black camera and me just like crinkling things and doing stuff. Come pooper. It works. Look at this. There's no like miming involved. We got a nice clear camera. Our stovetop cam is back. Everything is perfect all I gotta say and yeah thankfully even though the power went out at around 10 a.m this morning they got it fixed within an hour so yay for that I was really worried that today's stream might not happen because usually when the power goes out here it takes them a good six to ten hours to actually fix it but got it fixed fast here we are and today is a big stream day, I would say. Pretty much at the end of the month, the last stream of August, let's say. And we're also doing the giveaway for our wonderful salts, which are just right up there. So somebody today on stream is going to win a nice four pack of salts. And I will probably get those sent out tomorrow or maybe Saturday. I might not have time tomorrow before work. We'll see. Hey, Chance, welcome in. Hope you guys are doing good. So today's stream is for Chance as well. And we are trying out a product that he sent me. So this is made here on the island, just up in Campbell River. And we have a Thai fried rice mix. So I thought I would try it out, see how it tastes. I'm going to be making a lot of different veggies with it today as well. And we're also going to grind some fresh pork to fry up with it. So Thai fried rice with some delicious fried up ground pork and a bunch of veg going down. So not too bad of a stream. I would say this is a pretty simple meal to make. Fried rice is like a good go-to meal. If you have a bunch of stuff already made in the fridge, like leftovers, and let's say you have some leftover rice. So this is always better when you make the rice the day before, so it has time to dry out a little bit, and then it will really fry up. I know some people have probably tried fried rice before and made the rice, not cooled it down, and then go to fry it, and it kind of just goes to mush. So the rice just falls apart. So it's important that we cook this rice early, spread it out onto a sheet pan so it has time to be completely cooled before we go to fry it. Very important step today. So this is gonna be made sooner rather than later. And this little pack will give us six cups, which I think will be enough for me to use for leftovers because we are putting a lot of veggies into it and we can put quite a bit of pork too. So maybe we'll go a little bit less on our simple carbs today. I mean, it's summertime after all, the sun is shining. Let's keep eating our veggies while they're nice and fresh here. And that is it for the stream guys. So I won't be doing the draw for the giveaway until 5 p.m. So we have two and a half hours until it is draw time in the giveaway. So if you want to buy tickets, Nike, I know you have a lot of bones to buy some tickets. So get them in if you want them. I think, I think there was something like 62 tickets purchased, which is unreal. I did not think 63 tickets, but only 16 people entered. So the odds are still pretty good for you guys. I mean, even if you just buy one ticket, you might win it. You never know. And I will ship it to you. But this is one thing that I will say because of the last giveaway, I kind of got burned is I will ship it to you. I'll put it that it's a gift, which usually you don't have to pay customs. 
obviously depending where you are but i am not going to be held liable if you guys get charged customs this is going to be a pretty small package so i don't see there being a lot of a customs charge but just so you know because the last giveaway we did with the apron i sent it all the way to scotland and then the person did not want to pay for the customs charge to receive the package so it's getting sent back to me so at some point we will be giving away another cook with kate apron on stream nice chance you have quite a few bones as well okay guys so thai fried rice i mean there's quite a few asian cuisines that fried rice is a part of and this is a dish that i think you can really personalize and have fun with it i don't think i've ever made the same fried rice twice let's just put it that way is there's a lot of different ingredients you can use and i would say the method of preparation always stays the same it's very simple it can be one of those one pan meals if that's what you want nice thanks for buying that ticket chance viewn welcome in how is the stream and how is the pizza what's up alucio and scat welcome in <laughs> Honestly, Vune, your emo with my onion looks so good together. I love it. <laughs> looks so good in chat. It's just that color combination. It's perfect. Okay, we're just getting into the fun facts of Thai fried rice, and then we'll get started prepping. And Vune, I was just saying to these folks that the giveaway draw for our wonderful salts today is gonna be in two and a half hours. So you guys still have some time to buy some tickets. <laughs> judge myself, judge myself. Kate, okay, let's see, clicking on the link. What happened? Oh my gosh, that looks so good, dude. So you used your little pizza oven? Is that correct? I need to get my cursor over to Sammy's monitor so I can see this. But honestly, that looks so good. Even with like the little cord in that photo and everything. Sorry, I'm just looking at the other monitor. Like that looks staged. It looks perfect. <laughs> Damn keyboard. Yeah. What was your favorite thing that you made on stream today? I always like asking that question. Okay, I'm going to get into this fun facts here, but feel free to keep chatting. So Thai fried rice, also called cow pat, is a variety of fried rice typical of central Thai cuisine. In Thai, the word cow means rice, so K-H-A-O. And pat, P-H-A-T, fat. I don't know if they say fat or pat means of or relating to being stir fried so it literally translates to rice that is stir fried perfect that makes it so simple score says you make pizza in a dry aluminum pan and finish it off by putting it under the grill yes so you get a really nice crispy crust then i bet <laughs> on a daily death I don't know if he has a set schedule, but I do have a set schedule. So you guys know that I'm always going to start at the same time or around the same time. And you know what? You can do a multi twitch on a daily if you want to watch both of us at once. I don't have the link for the multi twitch, but it is possible to watch two streams at once on the same browser page. It's pretty cool. Check it out. Multi twitch. Okay, sounds good, Chance. And thank you for sending that package. I'm so excited to try it. A viewer of yours created the pizza so much meat pizza. Patent pending, love it. Which is basically bacon bits, chorizo, 
French ring salami and fried chicken strips with Swiss cheese. What? So you made that on stream? That is unreal. I like that there is the chorizo in there for a little bit of spice. That'd be a good combo. The chicken strips might throw me off though. I mean, as long as they stay crispy, I think that's all that matters. <laughs> that's crazy. You made that on stream. I love it. It was too good to just leave. Well, then that settles it. It's a good pizza. By the way, do I feel like 375 on a godlike chef's knife with a custom handle? One left, R2 powder steel, 250 mil, shaped after a Masamato KS Sabatier and thin behind the edge. 375 though for a knife? Like you better make sure that you use this knife every day because that's a lot of money to spend. Like you don't have to buy an expensive knife for it to be good. I mean, I have some expensive knives. I also have some really affordable knives that I use on a daily basis. Like all of my butchery knives, I think cost around $30 a piece. Same with my serrated. Whereas I spend a little bit more on my chef's knife because I just use it so much more. But that is up to you. You can totally buy a really good chef's knife for around $150. But if you have the money to spend, well then you might as well treat yourself. Yeah, I want to check out the link for sure. Sounds good, Vune. I'm going to guess, Vune, that you're going to be cleaning for a little bit. <laughs> Here in Kansas, you have a place called Grinders, and you order a pizza and chili bomb, it, which adds chili cheese tater tots and onions. This is insanity, you guys. I have never had pizza that crazy before. Chef knives to go. See, I, all, I never go to those pages because I always get sucked into buying something. So like for me to sign up for a cooking online thing for a site, cannot do. Kate cannot because that's where all my money would go. Let me just take a peek at this. Whoa, the handle is so nice. It's like pink. It looks really good. Are you familiar with knives of that style? Ça va, Zcox? Ça va bien. E2? Better edge retention than a carbon and would chip less fast due to the structure. Yes, I, that is going to be one of my next knives as well, is something of that style. And it is going to be Japanese too. But here's the thing, is I can get a obviously hand forged, personalized knife from Japan for around 150 bucks of that same style. So decide if you think that that's going to be worth it for you. It never hurts to do a bunch of different online shopping and checking out different prices and comparing. I'm really big into that these days because there should be no reason for you to really buy anything at full price these days. Obviously not everything goes on sale, but I think if you look, you'll always find a cheaper version for the same quality. Is There's just so much to choose from in the world now. So yeah, the shopping aspect of it can get overwhelming. You have a knife obsession, oh my gosh. Well then, that does it. <laughs> the normal is 250, you pay 125 extra. Ah, oh, for just the handle. That is such a nice handle then. Do it. Do it. Mies, you are here. There's so many hosts right now. Welcome in guys. We're kind of just going over the plan for the stream today. Thank you for the host, Mies. Love you. And I hope you had a good stream. And as you can see, we are back full force today. Computer is working perfectly. 
You can't watch all of the stream though, Mia, because we're going to be grinding the pork today. And I know you hate that stuff. So just a warning, that's going to be like one of the first things we do. But then after that, all we're doing is like prepping veg for it. <laughs> I'm sorry, but I have to. You know this. Ah, you're in Europe. Okay, that's fair then. And the import taxes, that's nuts. You don't have your dream knives. Okay, well then, if you think that's a good price, then I think you should get it. It is a beautiful looking knife, and I'm sure it would be an awesome addition to your collection. Okay, so back to our Thai fried rice. So this dish differs from Chinese fried rice in that it's prepared with Thai jasmine rice, which is a rice that I always use anyways, instead of regular long grain rice. So something like a basmati. It normally contains meat, so you can do chicken, shrimp, crab even, which is expensive, so I don't know about that one. And I'm doing pork today. I don't think I've ever had like a Thai fried rice with beef in it. Beef is not a big thing there. Their cows really skinny, so they mostly get used for like farming and stuff like that, like hauling stuff in the field rather than for food, which I can accept 100%. Customs would charge you $200 plus shipping. That is insanity. I guess that makes me thankful for living in North America where we literally can get stuff shipped the same day for free. That is craziness. So the seasonings for Thai fried rice may include soy sauce, a little bit of sugar to offset that, and it also helps to brown the rice, salt, possibly some kind of chili or chili sauce and the ubiquitous fish sauce, which I think gives a really good flavor, even though it smells really fishy. This is more to me similar to soy sauce in the aspect that it's just really salty. But when you combine the soy sauce and the fish sauce, it gives you that amazing umami flavor, which I think is why Asian style foods are so delicious and you always just want to keep eating more and more. And then those are all stirred fried together with the other ingredients. So the dish is then plated and served with accompaniments like cucumber slices, which I love because that kind of freshens up everything and it's almost like a palate cleanser. Because since fried rice is pretty much just all mixed together, you need that little bit to cut it and to help you keep wanting to eat it. So every time you eat the cucumber slice, it puts that like all that water into your mouth and kind of washes it out and gets you ready for another spoonful. Thanks for the follow, sponge baby carpet brain. Love it. Now you have a blue two steel, but you don't like the cladding. It's too short and the profile is so, so. Yeah, I mean, I only have one really nice Japanese knife and I have to get it refinished. It's definitely not as sharp as it should be or I need to work on it on my own whetstone. I just haven't done it enough to be like really comfortable with it and to know the angles at what I should be doing. So I definitely need more practice. And that is one thing when you buy expensive knives is you have to take care of them. Otherwise, there's no point in buying something that expensive if you just let it get dull. And I hate when people do that is like, oh, my knife is dull, I'll just buy a new one. No, your knife is not broken forever. Like there are ways to fix that and also maintain it being sharp. Like every time, pretty much every day I use my steel to keep the edge on the knife. No, this is not for sharpening, but it does keep it sharp if you use it enough. Okay, so once we plate the dish of the fried rice, it also can get tomato slices with the cucumber, which is another thing that's really juicy and fresh 
I have some cherry tomatoes that I'm gonna throw on the plate. And then this one, lime, which is probably my favorite thing. And then also sprigs of green onion or cilantro, whatever you want. And today we're gonna do pineapple fried rice. I like the sweet and sour and salty combo of all that. And the pineapple also helps it to not dry out as much. So it kind of makes it saucy. Honing each day, that's why you don't like Shen. Yeah, I mean, I do love that knife, but I know that there are still better knives out there. And obviously this knife has a couple chips in it as well, which I don't even know how I got them, but it sucks when that happens. Because unless you have a grinder and know how to use it, you have to get that knife taken in somewhere and you have to pay to get it fixed. So not the best, but eh, it happens. I think I might put a little bit of basil into this rice as well. That's one thing I love about Thai food is that they use a lot of basil. I mean, I don't have the Thai basil, but we do have some really nice basil that I think I should throw in. A pain in the D. I've never heard that, but I like it. Pain in the D. Okay, let's look up a little bit how to make the perfect fried rice because like I was saying earlier when not very many of you are in here there are a couple things to keep in mind if you want to make a really awesome fried rice like what you would get at obviously your Thai restaurant or your Chinese place because some people just don't they obviously try to make it but then it just turns out kind of like mushy and like wet and messy So rule number one is you have to use the right rice. So perfect fried rice is all about the texture. You need to look for rice that had distinct grains and a little bit of a chewy texture and a bite. So obviously you need to be able to also cook that rice properly. You don't want to overcook it, but you don't want to undercook it either because there's not that much liquid going into this fried rice. So if you undercook it, it's just going to soak everything up and it's still going to be crunchy. Not that good. So fried rice recipes typically call for Chinese style medium grain rice, although the Thai versions use fragrant jasmine rice and Japanese style fried rice, which I don't know if I've ever had, can be made with short grain sushi rice. That would be interesting. Rule number two, plan in advance if you can, but don't worry if you don't. So it says, I've always heard that fried rice is best made with day old rice and that fresh rice will turn to mush if you try to fry it. So he did a little test and you can cook the rice if you leave it cool for an hour without it starting to fall apart but the best one is actually if you cook the rice the day before. That way the kernels get dry, which helps it to fry a lot nicer. So rule number three, it says to rinse the rice, which sadly we will not be able to do today because we have all of these spices mixed in. So this is what I'm using for our Thai fried rice. So ingredients on the package, are you guys ready for this? Rice, obviously. It doesn't say what kind, but it does look like a shorter grain. It's definitely not basmati. Dehydrated vegetables, so onions and bell peppers. Spices, sugar, salt, and lime juice powder. So there's a little bit of seasoning already in here. So it's really important that we try this after we cook it so that we don't over season the fried rice later on. You can fry fresh rice if you cook it the right way, but only in Teflon, not in carbon. Ah, that makes sense. So that it doesn't stick, right? So rule number four, you should break up your rice 
once it's cooled. Aw, oh, thanks, Maisie. I like these earrings too, my little pirate earrings. Okay, breaking up the rice. So you don't want it, the rice to be clumpy when you're frying it because then it won't be fully covered in all of your sauces and seasonings. Because if you leave it clumping, the seasoning's only gonna be on the outside and then when you break that up, it's gonna be unseasoned on the inside, which can really affect the flavor. Rule number five, use a wok, which sadly we do not have, but we do have a big cast iron which we can get just as hot. So that is what I'm gonna be using today. Yeah, I still need to get a wok, guys. This is a thing. Okay, rule number six, keep things very hot. So you need really, really high heat when you're frying rice. Obviously that can kind of smoke up your kitchen, but it's worth it. And once you get the oil smoking and throw all the ingredients in, then it's just going to kind of steam. Your house won't be that bad after you fry the rice. You guys will see today if you make it to the end of the stream. Matt, how are you, man? It will help with the veggies and the ingredients. Yes. Yeah, we need to invest in a wok still. Matt, your blue knife means that you're moving up in the Cook with Kate channel. So I believe that means you've been in here for what, two months? You have to accept it, man. <laughs> it's bound to happen. Sorry, three months. See? You will accept the blue knife. Yeah, I don't even know my own badges. Don't hate me, guys. Okay, rule number seven for the rice. Go easy with the add-ins. So my plan today with all of the vegetable add-ins, I think other than the carrots and maybe the cabbage, I'm going to cook a lot of the veggies separate and then just add them in later or around the side of the plate so that we don't make the rice too soggy because obviously vegetables have a lot of water in them, which is the opposite of what you want when you're frying something. Matt, yeah, I didn't even want to be here. <laughs> so it says just as a plate of pasta is really about the pasta itself, not the sauce, fried rice is all about the rice. Very important. The mix-ins should all be flavor enhancers, not stars unto themselves. And I really like putting carrot in the rice, especially if you leave it a little bit crunchy. It gives a little bit of sweetness and obviously some crunch to the dish. And I have a bunch of other veggies from the garden that we're going to use today as well. Even with the onions and aromatics, yes, 100%. And it says, go easy with the sauce. It says, as long as you're using good technique, so a really hot pan and high quality rice, you don't need a ton of sauce. So maybe a couple teaspoons of each one will be enough, obviously depending on the amount that you're making. Some good sauces to use, obviously soy sauce and fish sauce for the Thai rice. You can use oyster sauce. There's also hoisin, but any of those nice dark sauces are usually pretty sweet or salty. So if you use too much, obviously that can ruin all of your rice. You're excited to see how I'm going to do the fried rice. I'm probably going to have to do it in two separate batches. We'll see how it goes. And I'm going to be frying the pork separately as well. So we can kind of spice the pork up after we grind it or before. So it kind of marinates. Matt, last day of the giveaway, man. See, on a daily, I can't eat that Chinese sausage. We tried it once, Sam and I, and it has like a super irony flavor. 
And then I looked at the ingredients because it honestly looked so good and smelled really good. There was like liver in there. It totally ruined that sausage for me because that iron flavor was just overpowering compared to the other spices in the sausage. So sadly, not a huge fan of that stuff, but at least I did try it once. And it's not very often that I'm picky, but it's just certain things typically that have liver where I'm like, mm, no, not going into Kate, not a thing. Okay, so a couple more rules for our rice. I think this one's important is how to add your egg to the rice. So for me, I don't like just mixing in the scrambled egg with the rice. I would rather make a little omelet ahead of time, cook it separately, and then slice it up. So you get nice egg pieces. You actually know what you're eating. And I also like that the egg pieces are really nice and yellow. It gives a good contrast to the rice. They bake out like bacon and the fat gives so much flavor. Yeah, you know, it was really sweet. And then just the after flavor was not a good thing for me. Yeah, I've made a couple fried rices and I have come to find that I don't like making the scrambled egg into the rice. Always do it separate and then heat it afterwards. And that way you can also control not overcooking your eggs. Okay, another one, add nice fresh green elements, obviously for color contrast again. And that will make the rice a little bit lighter whenever you're adding vegetables. And then you just need to toss that all together and plate it. Ready. <laughs> Matt, are you being crazy? It's okay on a daily. This is Matt. He is sarcastic. Everyone, please play nicely. We're ready to have a good day. Okay, so I do have a pretty simple recipe that I am using today. Here it is. And this recipe, hilarious enough as it is, does call for those little sausages, but I'm not gonna be using that. I do like the other ingredients that they use. So they use soy sauce, poison, and some rice vinegar. I like that addition of acid. I think it needs it. And they do the pork in here too. So I kind of use this recipe for inspiration. <laughs> Nike on my way. <laughs> you're an attack helicopter and you're beautiful. You know it. So green onions, we need some nice fresh ginger and garlic. Very important. I think those two things. Some nice hot chili, which I think I'm just going to use some jalapeno today that I have left over. And then our pineapple, which I have frozen pineapple, so I'm going to have to take it out of the freezer sooner than later. And they're in nice bite-sized chunks. I think I might cut them a bit smaller. And then maybe some cilantro to garnish. I guess we shall see. That's it, guys. Okay, so first things first, we gotta prep our meat grinder. So all of the metal pieces have to go into the freezer so they can chill out for a little bit. You always want your meat grinder to be really cold so that the meat doesn't really stick to it. And that way you'll get a really nice grind instead of it kind of mashing through the blade. If you keep everything really cold, it just kind of works itself out really nicely. And that way we'll have nice, pieces of ground pork that can hold together and have a little bit of substance. I don't know if you guys have ever bought ground pork from the store and it's like literally just mush, like it just falls apart. You're like, what did you do to this? Why? <laughs> so since I've been using this meat grinder, I'm pretty much converted and don't like to buy ground meat from the store anymore. That way I also know what is in my meat grind. Welcome in, Rook. How are you, man? Yeah, Rook is purple. Yeah, what's wrong with purple, Matt? That's my favorite color. Okay, 
after we prep the grinder, obviously we have to cut up the pork. Nice one inch cubes will fit through the grinder perfectly and then we'll grind everything. Then we can spice it if we want to since we're frying it separately. I don't know what kind of spices you guys use. I'm open to suggestions, of course. It's a grill color. Man, I don't even believe that. I think guys look really attractive in purple and pink. And plus that just means they're not afraid to express themselves and be who they are. Okay, after we prep our meat, obviously that's not gonna be cooked until way later in stream. I'm gonna say the meat will take maybe five minutes to cook. Really, really quick execution. Then we'll cook our rice after that and make sure it cools off really well so that we can fry it perfectly later on. And then after that, like I said, we're just gonna work on prepping all of our vegetables for our rice. So I have, let's look at my little tray here. See what we have to work with. A couple things are fresh from the garden. A couple other things are store bought. But look at all these wonderful colors. Like this looks amazing. You're wearing a purple shirt today. You're the best, Rook. Okay, so our cucumber for garnish, keeping it nice and fresh. We have our little bit of jalapeno. We have half a lime. I do have more limes, but this is just stuff that I kind of took out of my fridge and was like, I think this would be good in fried rice. We have our fresh ginger here that will mince up. These are my beans from the garden. These are long beans. And this is the coolest thing today that you guys will see is these beans are now purple. When you cook them, they turn green. I don't know how or why, but it's magical. I pulled out our little squash plant. I believe that was yesterday, just because it's not really growing anymore and it's getting too cold, so nothing's really happening. So we have that little bit of squash, but this is what it does look like when it grows. I thought leaving this flower on would be such a beautiful garnish and you can eat these flowers. So that's another thing is when you're garnishing your food, everything needs to be edible. You can't just put it there for show because maybe someone might eat it without knowing, right? So important thing, our little piece of cabbage, finally use that up. We got a couple of radishes here that we'll slice, some carrots, and then just some nice sweet peppers. Healthy overload. Yeah, for sure. I mean, you guys know I like my veggies and I eat a lot in the summertime. And then we also have our broccoli and cauliflower, which I love when they get fried up. Put a little bit of char on there, build up some flavorings. A tray of puke, grow up, Matt. Thanks on a daily. Anthocyanins change color with changes in acidity and eventually turn colorless as acid levels drop. Cool. A direct effect of the heat is to cause decom decomposition of the anthocyanin. So cool. That's why they change color. You're the best, man. I love when you give us that little tidbit of info that I may not know. you guys little smarty pants in here. Okay, so that is our plan for the day. Let's get started. We now have, I think one hour, 45 minutes until we draw the giveaway. Man, he totally Googled it, but at least I didn't have to Google it. So I appreciate that. I will give you a little update. So I stayed at work a little later last night so that I could do my shadowing to learn how to cook for dinner service that I'm gonna be doing tomorrow at work. And you know what? I feel really good about it. I was a little bit nervous obviously because I haven't cooked 
online, let's say, I know that probably doesn't make sense to you guys, but in a kitchen for a service in almost a year. So I'm not as, like I'm pretty fresh still, I would say, but it's kind of like riding a bike. It's like once you, once you learn the motions, you're good. And after doing that last night for two and a half hours, I feel good. I'm not nervous. So here's the main part of the grinder. We need this guy. I'm gonna go for a more coarse grind on the pork today. Here is our auger, which helps push the meat through. So I'm gonna go the most coarse dye that there is so that the meat has a little bit more bite. And I think it'll fry up nicer. So this is the coarsest dye that we have. And then this guy is usually the one I use for burgers. So you can see the difference there. So that's gonna give a little bit more texture in the meat, especially because it's pork shoulder which if you were to cook it whole, that would take a long time to cook. Yoon's back. What's the top color? The top color is yellow or gold, which is gonna be one year. And then we don't get any more badges until I get partner. And then obviously it goes two year, three year, and so on. Is there any way to turn off the free loot pop-ups on the streams you watch without the streamer having to disable it? Huh, I don't know, man. I didn't even know that was a thing. Yeah, Vyun, the PC is back. We are back stronger than ever. Okay, let me put all those pieces into the freezer. And then we're gonna get Porky. Your car is yellow. That is so funny. Sammy was trying to get us to buy a yellow car because it was a really good deal. <laughs> and I was like, nope. That car is too ugly. I will not never drive that. That's where I drew the line. Yeah, maybe if you get a yellow, it will mix with the blue to make green. I love your positive thinking, Rook. The world needs more of that. Hey, I'm just gonna set up the mixer on the counter first so that everything is pretty much ready to go. Huh, that's so funny, Matt. Honestly, I think that was the car that Sammy was showing me. Is we're looking at a little Focus ST, I think. And he was showing me the RS one and I was like, no, I don't even care if it has a turbo. It's too ugly. <laughs> yes, Nike. Man, the purple suits you, I think. For your name color in chat. I love it. Okay, I'm just gonna put Look at our broccoli and cauliflower, mass amounts. Don't worry guys, we're not gonna make all of this. One guy in your village has a new Rolls Royce Phantom. The heck does he do for a living? We got our pork. It's all wrapped up. I just put some paper towel on it to soak up any juices. Because we want that meat as dry as possible, right? That way it's going to fry up really nice. And you know it's a good day when we get to take out the sward. Ha ha. Can I not get the turbo without the body and trim package? That's what you did with your 370Z. You didn't like the Nismo body, but you wanted all the en other engine stuff. Well, we just found the car used. 
And you know what? It was a really good price and it didn't have very many kilometers. But then Sammy did more research on it and it was actually a rebuild. So we're like, mm, nah, I don't think it will be worth it. Scimitar time. I think it's pretty fitting that we get to use this knife with my pirate earrings today. <laughs> We're here in full force. A Ford Escort? Is this what you're showing me? You have that in yellow, man? I can see it. I can see it, Matt. It makes sense. Yes, Scat. Oh my gosh. I just need the eye patch. I'll go full pirate. <laughs> Nike's gearing up for the weekend. Is it Labor Day weekend for you guys there too? Everyone has a long weekend? The second photo down. Ah, okay. Let me see here. <laughs> nice. It looks awesome. Well, happy Labor Day then, guys. Let's get porky. So I am going to grind all of this, but I don't I'm going to use it all. It's so much. But it'll be nice to have some fresh ground pork in the freezer for whatever I want to do. This looks healthy. It's a good looking piece of pork. So we got some good fat on there. Gonna help with flavor. I'm into it. I'm just gonna fry it up in a pan. So it gets kind of crispy and delicious. But we're not gonna overcook it. Which means we need our pan really, really hot. And like I said, we can spice it up as well. You want the pork medium rare. I love that, Nike. You're not scared. It should shrink a little bit. Yes, it will. Especially with all that fat, right? I don't know what kind of spices we want to use for it. Or we can just keep it plain and have that nice pork flavor. Got to take our string off first. Are we trimming the fat? Hell no. That's where all the flavor is, man. I'd rather cook it out than trim it off beforehand because the fat keeps everything moist. I think that's important. So this is a pork shoulder. Obviously, there's no bone in it and it's kind of like opened up. So let's get started. If we see any kind of tough silver skin in here, obviously we'll trim it off. But for the most part, I think this looks pretty good. I might trim out some of this stuff on the middle here because it's a softer fat and that doesn't render as nicely. But it would be a shame to trim off all this fat, right? Because you're paying for that. So you have to kind of think about when you cook a pork shoulder is you don't trim all the fat out first. Is that helps to flavor the pork as you cook it. Well, think about a burger grind is for my burger grind, I think I would like more of a 70-30 blend of meat to fat. Some people go 75-25, but I wouldn't go any less than that. Then your meat just gets too dried out. And I think especially because we are leaving it pretty coarse grind, you need that fat to help keep it moist. I could be wrong though. I mean, I'm always open for discussion and what you guys think. Checking out all this uh, 
connective tissue here, seeing if I have to trim any off, but maybe a little bit here in the middle. Just looks a little bit thick. You prefer 90-10 and you're used to 80-20. Spot checking. So this stuff right here, that's kind of like this clear type of tissue that covers the meat. We don't want that, but we do want the little meat pieces. Just depends on the mood scat, exactly. I mean, fried rice is not a super fatty dish. I mean, it doesn't have to be. So you can kind of decide how much fat you want to put in. I think that's good. Oh my God, ad hoc, yes. I just did short rib and ribeye burgers a couple weeks back. Probably the best burgers I've ever made. Definitely not that I've ever eaten. I mean, I can't really compete with a Gordon Ramsay burger. But yeah, short rib, so much fat and marbling and it tasted so freaking good. What am I pairing with the meat, Matt? What do you mean? Like we have all those veggies, we're gonna be cooking off that little package of rice. I don't really know what kind of spices I wanna put in with the meat, but if we want to season it, we should probably do that before we grind, just so that we can let the grinder do the work for us and kind of mix it all together. I don't like mixing up meat too much after it's ground unless I'm making meatballs. And even then I'm super gentle with it. Cause every time you mix it, it's just gonna make it tough. Will there be egg? Hell yeah, there will be egg. Besides rice, this is it, man. Pretty simple meal that we're cooking today. But there are important steps to make it awesome. Jerk seasoning, I mean, that's not really a Thai thing though. Even though jerk fried pork would be freaking delicious. We'll have to make sure that we do that another time, Nike. Jamaican jerk fried rice, I'm down. Yeah, so many veggies. We need a seasoning that ties it all together. So I do have this little container of like our nuoc sham or the Asian kind of dipping sauce or Vietnamese style. So I wanna put that into the fried rice. It's pretty much lime juice, fish sauce, sugar, and chilies which are all things that go into Thai fried rice. I should do a honey glaze on the pork. Oh my gosh, that sounds good. That would definitely help it caramelize. Okay, so now I have these little meat strips. Let's cut our cubes. A honey seasoning, that sounds delicious, man. That's a great suggestion. 
coriander, I'm sure, would be great. Definitely wouldn't do cumin. Because that's more of like a South American style spice. I mean, I do have five spice kicking around. But I know that can get really overpowering if you use too much. Five spice and honey. So guys, what's everyone been eating today? Anything delicious that you feel like you should share? Where is za'atar from? So that's a Middle Eastern thing. I love za'atar as well. Sweet chili sauce. Yeah, that's always a good one as well. 100%. Can't go wrong with that. You did backup cook today by yourself. Yes, dude, you're killing it. Like look how much you'd advanced already in such a short time. That is so awesome. Okay, let's get into the rest of this. Do a little trimmy trim on top here. I guess I'm gonna ask you guys this now. You guys plan on being around to watch a stream on Monday? Cause I know it's a long weekend. But if I do a stream on Monday, you guys gonna be here to watch? Or should I not do a stream on Monday so you guys can do other things? It's definitely a hard job, but you'll get used to it. Nice. Yeah, everything takes time. Practice makes perfect. Scat, you slept all day, waking up to this, and now you're starving. Oh, the struggle. The struggle is real. That looks so yummy. Just fry up that little pork steak right now. Yeah, Rook, work is crazy for you. If you're here, you're here. If you're not, I understand. And that goes for everyone. Sometimes life gets crazy, I understand but we'll still be here for you. It'll probably be a stream for Sammy. I mean, I was thinking about grilling up some burgers, doing a little multi-twitch action, spend some time outside, just have some fun. Vune, the time here now, 3.34. So you've been going for an hour already. Summer is almost over. Oh yeah. I mean, it's still pretty nice though. The weather here stays pretty mild until I would say like mid to late October is when it starts to cool off a lot. And then obviously the rain starts. 
But the thing is, everything stays green here throughout the winter. So nothing gets really blanketed by snow. It stays nice and bright. And it doesn't get that cold either. Like, I think the coldest it got last year was minus 7. Even though with the humidity, it feels so cold. <laughs> hey, Armored, how are you? You drank for a solid 48 hours, Monday and Tuesday. It was a good stress relief. Yeah, I believe it, man. I mean, if that's what you need to kind of let go and regroup, then do it. Yes, Vyun. Buy that ticket, man. Nike, you're sixth. Yes. Armored, it snowed for two days last winter. Yeah, well, it's more really than a, a dusting, hey? Same here. Like, even if it snows randomly, it does not stick around for very long. I feel a really tough piece here, so I'm just going to cut it out. We don't want any weird, like, gristly pieces in our pork, right? We have the control over that, so let's make sure that we have a really nice grind. Okay, we made all of our strips again. Let's cut our cubes. Hello, Elvin. How are you? Vune, you go play your game, man. We'll be here, and you enjoy it. <laughs> Alvin, just stealing Rook's win. Typical. You needed to hear some of the ASMR, the meat cutting. This is what soothes you. I'll take it. Where did the last two months go? I know, man. Honestly. It's like, how is it September? Like, it's just been a blur, honestly. I'm really looking forward to having the weekend off. And honestly, just relaxing. Knowing that I really don't have any set plans. Really, really nice. Lauren was in here. It's true. Where has she been? And is she still making awesome food? These are important questions. Thank you for bringing that up, Elvin. Okay, we did it, guys. She'll tell her to jump in. Get in the kitchen. Make some foods. Okay, I'm just going to spray down my knife and my board. Keeping it clean.
She works six days a week. That's crazy. Oh my gosh, what happened in Sushi Day's stream? Man, you guys are always getting up to trouble. <laughs> Lauren, how are you? Welcome in. Okay, so I know we were talking about kind of spicing this stuff up. Let me see what I got kicking around. Oh, this one's actually really good. I don't know if you've ever tried this. La Grill, Asian-inspired barbecue from Clubhouse. It's actually really good. This kind of saved my life when I was doing like my bodybuilding because it doesn't have a lot of sugar in it. So that's what I had to look for when I was seasoning stuff. And I also couldn't have a lot of salt either. So like these little mixes from Clubhouse saved my life. So this has garlic onion and green onion, ginger, chilies, obviously salt and sugar, sesame seed. It's really yummy. I think this is what I'm going to be mixing in into some of the pork. Yeah, bodybuilding. It's true. This was two months ago, though. Vunity muffin. Oh, my gosh. I have not. Why do I always miss these things? Yeah, I did a bodybuilding competition like two years ago, guys. It's a long time ago, and I'll never do it again. Okay, let's come over here. So I'm gonna grind a little bit of this pork, just plain, and then we'll mix in the seasoning into the meat. Let us assemble the grinder, and then we will get started. Grab a couple bowls out as well. You got to add another video. Wait, you are eating the spicy pepper, Lauren? Oh, it's so cold. Tighten that on. In goes the auger, like that. And then our blade, you want to face it up with these little grooves and that what pushes the meat through the die, our really coarse die. This is the biggest one I have. Just a, just a few habaneros, yeah, nothing crazy. I'm pretty sure I would be near death if I did that. Let's start grinding some cannabis. I can't do that on stream, Nike, but you go for it. So now all I have to do, turn this little guy this way, and that's where we feed the meat in. Time to make meat worms, guys. This is like your favorite part, isn't it? Okay. So Sun likes to plate things, which usually turns out uh, the less said the better. Hilarious. I have seen him do a couple of platings and I admire his want to create new things. Let's just say that. You guys know I have a pretty simple plating style though. He bisected a muffin with an inverted glass and put his wife's wedding ring in there. Unity. What? Hilarious. It may sound tame, but it looks so bad. <laughs> Sun is always up to no good. This is what I've come to the conclusion with. But that's what makes the stream fun, I think. Be wild, be yourself. Okay, I got gloves on. I'm gonna keep things nice and clean. And then we're gonna start doing this thing. So I think I'll do one third plain and then we'll do the other two thirds for tonight. Make sure that's on nice and tight. And you can tell that this is frosty, right? 
So that's what we want. We need like a nice medium speed. Ugh, glove love. What's up, Millie? Your bag of Reese's cups. You were fooled. Yeah, the fun size packaging. They gotcha. Pink slime. Not even though. This ain't no McDonald's pink slime. Farthest thing from it. Okay, we'll let that just finish grinding through. And then I'll shut it off mix up the rest of that. And then this is going to go into the freezer, I think. Yeah, I think this is a pretty good grade of pork. So there's a little piece of like grease that comes out of the grinder. It happens. I always just watch as it grinds. You can't really get away from it, but you can definitely take it out. Obviously when you're putting metal together, not the most optimal. It is pork shoulder. Millie, you know your stuff. <laughs> Tris, last time someone snuck up on you, it was a cop. The worst. Okay. Let's season this up. I'm not gonna put too much of this. Just that little bit of extra flavor before we go to fry it later. Perfect. And like I said, I like to do my seasoning before I grind because then we don't have to disturb the meat too much after it's ground. It'll stay nice and tender and moist. So literally just give that a little mix and then you're good to go. So really not that much in there. Like you can barely see it. But since there's so much other stuff going on in our fried rice, I think we need to keep it a little bit more simple. Let's get back to it. Holy Trish, you slept 14 hours. That must feel so good. Ground turkey years ago. Yeah, even 
Chris, you feel great. That is awesome. You would feel better if you know where your food sleep was. Oh no. Are you having car troubles? Yeah, eight hours a night, yo. That's what I need too, to feel alive. Really, Millie? Five hours? I would not survive. to do let's move this up a bit but obviously unplug your machine first just in case and then i just take this whole thing off you got drunk last night gave chef de party 50 bucks for his and holly's anniversary passed out got five hours of sleep before waking up hungover bro that sounds brutal i mean not the donation part but the five hours of sleep and being hungover, that is never fun. Take it apart. See how clean this is on the inside? That's exactly what you want. That means everything was nicely chilled. If it wasn't, a lot of stuff would stick inside. Then you get more waste. And then I always like to soak those parts right away. That way the meat doesn't get stuck in there. This little bit that usually collects on the blade is pretty stringy. So it kind of cleans it for you. And this always happens, so I just chop that up as a loss, but that's really not that bad. Don't pass out with two hungry dogs. <laughs> what? Hey, Robbie. Welcome in. You don't want to do hot water on this because that's going to cook the meat onto the grinder because it's metal so like lukewarm water is totally okay there we go fresh ground pork for dinner In the next year, Tris? I don't know about that, man. That is, like, not something on high priority on my list at all. I'm not going anywhere. Sammy's not going anywhere. Let me just take this mixer out of here. And then it's on to cooking up some rice.
that he needs grandkids. Okay, that's fair to say. I'm sure she would love that. But there is no rush, man. I don't like rushing into things. I like to be really certain about the choices that I make. Just grabbing a freezer bag. And then we are gonna pack up this plain pork that we ground first. I know Turbo, it's an expensive mixer. We got it for a really good price through a kitchen wholesaler before we left Vancouver. And it is worth it compared to KitchenAid. I will never go back. You're 24. Yeah, that is fair. So not grown grown yet. I mean, I'm only 27. three streamers on your list hosting me unreal there's a lot of love to go around on twitch turbo it is terrifying <laughs> Elvin. fresh ground pork yep watch out world there we go that's going into the fridge this is going into the freezer now we have some pork prepped. Who knows what could happen? Feel the age and act the part. I love that motto. It's a lifestyle, not a mindset. I think either or. You're full of bite-sized Reese peanut butter cups. It's a dangerous slope to go down, Millie. I am also a Reese fiend. And I try my best to be good with those things. Reese's pieces are better. But ever, have you ever had Reese's Crunchers? That is the question. These little nuggets with chocolate and I think Rice Krispies, peanut butter and peanuts, Reese Crunchers. This is a thing. They're so good. Oh, and there's peanut butter chips in there. Keep them away. One and I'm done. <laughs> Thanks, Turbo. Exactly, Nike. Pretty much my life. Reese's in the freezer. I like that. Keeps it more fresh. Okay. So, this is from Chance. This is what he sent. So, his company, Tilly's Galley which is about three hours away from me, up island, up north. Thai fried rice mix. So what it says on the pack, it says you'll need two eggs, three and a quarter cups of water, two tablespoons of vegetable oil. Mm, it says that one large tomato chopped, I like that. And then they say one pound of either shrimp, prawns, diced meat or poultry. And then it says, in a medium saucepan, add your rice mix to the water and bring it to a boil. Reduce the heat to low, cover and simmer for 20 to 25 minutes. Once it's cooked, cool the rice mix and set it aside. So they are following the important steps for fried rice, which is good. In a large wok or skillet, heat the oil and cook your seafood or meat. Add your chopped tomato and simmer for two to three minutes. So I'm not putting tomato in the mix. I'm keeping it on the side fresh. And it says, stir in the cooked rice mix and heat through. So obviously you can add whatever you want to this. 
I'm adding a lot more veggies and I'm doing ground pork. And I'm also adding pineapple, which I love in any fried rice. You buy the two pound Reese cups? I didn't know there was two pound Reese cups. We only get the one pound ones here. That is insane. America. Rook, if you eat peanut butter, you just prefer it with Ritz and a cold glass of whole milk. Yum. The best thing is a chilled peanut butter cup. I kind of have to agree. Snickers and baby Ruth are the only thing with chocolate you'll eat. Hmm. Fifth Avenue. I don't think I've ever even heard about that. Oh my God, Elvin. I just answered this question today on Instagram from a guy that has a restaurant on the mainland. He owns a really, really good Italian restaurant. And so he posted the question to his people on Instagram is, where do you stand on the pineapple on pizza thing? Obviously Hawaiian style. And I was like, personally, I have always loved pineapple on pizza. And I think that's just because I like the sweet and savory combination of flavors. And then the conclusion we came down to was, yes, the combination of flavors, really good from a chef's standpoint. But if you want to get serious about it, no Italian is going to accept the pineapple on the pizza. So if you're going to stick with tradition, there will not be pineapple involved. If you want to switch things up a little bit, then use the pineapple. But this will create so many bad relationships. You can't post this question, Elvin. It's a very serious topic of debate. Pineapple chicken bacon. Yeah, it is. What is my guilty indulgence of snack food? I like to eat chips. I would say that. I am a huge fan of all dressed chips. And then, like I said, I like anything kind of Reese. A nice chocolate peanut butter combo. I am not huge into like candy per se, like gummy candies or anything super sweet. The refund email is being drafted yet. <laughs> the flavor may be good from a chef's standpoint, but a moral standpoint. Hey, I feel good about that choice. I'm not scared. Come at me, you guys. What is Sammy? Man, Sammy has a huge sweet tooth. You leave that guy alone, he gets into trouble 100%. So we can't have that many like chocolate related things in the house. He's like one of those sneaky chocolate eaters where I find wrappers in his backpack. I'm just like, when did you even eat this? Like, where did this come from? The chocolate just appears and then disappears just as fast. <laughs> You can eat an entire jar of salsa with about 10 chips. I love it. Just load it up. Who needs the chips? You're just there for the salsa. Yes, Nike. All dressed ruffles, 100%. The best all dressed chips ever. Vodka sodas and a little gherkins? Really? That is an interesting one, Millie. Yeah, me too, Matt. Like, I used to have a huge sweet tooth, but as I'm growing up, I have less and less of one, which is kind of sad, I think. Which is probably good for my body, though. Let's just say that. <laughs> the fuck? No pineapple on pizza. Let's hope Omat does not come in here because he feels very strongly about that. You prefer scotch or whiskey? Nice. I am always down for a really nice cocktail or drink. If it tastes good for you, it's good for you perfect life motto. Okay, let's start this rice. I'm going to go for a quick bathroom break after that. I know it says it's going to give us six cups for portions. I might add an extra cup of rice to this just to make sure that we have enough because this doesn't look like very much. I mean, what is this going to make? 
this is maybe two cups. I don't know. Let me just pour it into a container first and see what I'm working with. Because usually I cook two cups of rice for the fam. And that gives us plenty of leftovers. Nike, you bought two jars of pineapple salsa homemade. Yum. Was it kind of spicy? Oh my god, on a daily. Well, I mean, being a streamer, if you get caught up and like think that it's about competition and like having more viewers, I don't think that's fair. It's like everyone brings something special to their own stream. But yes, the timing of your streams have to be kind of thought out, but you also have to make it work for you. And obviously my schedule works really well for all of the viewers I have. So thankful for that, for sure. And everything happens with time. Have I lost weight? Honestly, I don't weigh myself much, but I've been feeling a lot better lately. I've been trying to not have as many late night snacks, so maybe. I don't know. Screw the scale. Usually just disappoints people. Okay, this looks pretty good. So we have, I think one and a half cups of rice. So let me add just a half cup of the jasmine. I honestly don't know what kind of rice this is. It almost looks like parboiled, which might be sad, but we'll carry on. Pineapple in ceviche, hell yeah. Yeah, the rice is gonna get swole. I've been wanting to make some kind of ceviche. That might be next on the list before summer is over. I'm gonna end up with too much rice, you think? You cannot outcook, Kate. <laughs> like, it does look parboiled. I mean, this was a gift, so I can't judge it. I can't say bad things. I'm just assuming, and you know what assuming does? Don't make it, don't make me say it, guys. I just wanna add the half cup, and then I will know that there's two cups of rice, which is what I always cook for the fam. And plus, fried rice left over, so freaking good. So since we have two cups of rice, we need to double our liquid. So we need four cups of liquid. So that makes sense because it called for three and a quarter cups initially. Yeah, look at the difference in the coloration. So this Thai Jasmine rice, this unknown, but we are coming to the assumption that it is parboiled which is not a bad thing, obviously. I think this pot will be big enough. Or five cups if it were brown rice. Yeah, it takes in so much more liquid. And you guys know I kind of like to toast my rice beforehand, so I'm still going to do that method. <laughs> Matt, judge it. I can't. It's not fair. It's not right. 175% water? Why? So 150% water plus rinsed rice. Ah, okay. That makes sense. I'll do it on this front burner. That way it'll stay hot. Hot, hot. And I think we need some lights in here already. That means the season's changing, guys. The sun is setting so much earlier. <laughs> Confusing Mike Cyan Ninja. Very easy mistake to make. Come on, you guys. 
<laughs> yeah, you can toast with a little bit of oil too. Like maybe if I add a little bit of coconut oil in there, that would be so good. Why not? Let's do it. Plus I'm trying to use the rest of this jar up because there's only that little bit left. <laughs> Mike, you don't even know your own emotes. It's okay, man. I don't even know my own sub badges. Okay, tablespoon of oil. This will make it delicious. I mean, anytime you add fat to something, that's just gonna add flavor. Let's get a spoon so we can stir this up. Look at the ugly sub badges. No, Matt, you are not green anymore. You might just have to make a new account if you wanna be green. Your name on everything but here is the green lighter or green lighter. Ah, well, shoot. Sometimes you just gotta accept life. <laughs> there might have been a kappa in there somewhere. Kappa. Hey, we're sizzling. This is a good thing. Should I put this other rice in too? Even though it has some spices and stuff? I'm scared. <laughs> Rook. Matt's getting salty. Rice, why does it expand so much? Hey, Dorian. I don't know, Trist. It's just magical. We are now putting rice everywhere as well. Okay, let's mix that into the oil for a sec. How nice is it to have a stove top cam again, though? <laughs> Feels brand new. And let's pour some water. I'll let that toast for a second. Am I gonna sear the pineapple? I might, man. Maybe after I fry up the pork, I'll fry the pineapple in that pork fat. How does that sound? And speaking of pineapple, we need to take it out of the freezer. That's all I have. And it's really, really sweet, the stuff that I get. So it gives really good contrast. Okay, let's pour in our water. There should be a good little sizzle. Good little sizzle indeed. Four cups. Now I'm gonna crank this. I'm gonna bring it 
to a boil pretty fast. And I'm also going to cover it. Boop. Matt teaching us the things about rice. Today, the last day to enter the giveaway, guys, for these lovely salts. This one, sweet and smoky maple. Imagine the things that you could make with that. You really miss your infrared cooktop. I mean, yeah, this is just an electric stove top, but it's actually pretty legit. Comparing it to gas, which I'm used to, this thing keeps heat and it does heat up pretty quick. I has a, I have a tool to cut pineapple. I actually don't. Shocking, I know. Okay, I'm gonna go take a quick bathroom break. And I will be back. Let me just pull out this pineapple so I don't forget to do that. Yeah, you know what? It's so easy to clean the glass off. That is great. here so you guys are gonna laugh this is what I'm using for pineapple Kirkland product of Guatemala now we know glory thank you spreading some love I appreciate that yeah we do need more of that in this world Kirkland Costco you know it Trist this is what I put in my smoothies in the morning. Current in range hood pulls smoke down and does not work. Oh my gosh. Okay, the brand that I have is Brown. B O or B R O A N. And it's actually really good. Yeah, it sucks up all of the grease. Really helps with cleaning for sure. Otherwise that grease just gets spread out throughout your house. Let's do like one and a half cups of pineapple. Should be lots, cause like I said, it's pretty sweet. Thanks, Glory. I hope you have a wonderful day and maybe we'll see you back in here. Okay, our rice is almost coming up to a boil. So now let's move on. We prepped our grinder, we ground our pork, we're now cooking our rice. So now onto all of these wonderful veggies. Thanks for the follow, Glory. We love you back. Just wanna make sure this rice doesn't boil over. I'm gonna prop the lid like that. Okay, where? Should we start? Maybe we should start with 
our aromatics, like the ginger. And I'll grab a couple of cloves of garlic. You gotta mince those guys up because that's gonna be one of the first things we need to fry. I'm gonna go pretty heavy on the garlic as well. Give this a little smash. Yeah. And then we're gonna mince that with the garlic press. Because that's the easiest thing to do. Kate smash. Yeah, we still got our Kate smash half an interest. Oh God, why would I just pour it onto the other peel? What doing? This is a savior, this garlic press. I think one of my favorite tools that sadly does not get used in professional kitchens. Good question, Mike. So I never cut any raw meat on this board ever. That's how I keep it sanitary. Because otherwise, yeah, it's gonna be a huge pain to keep sanitized all the time. You really risk spreading foodborne illnesses just because obviously the wood is permeable and it can soak up stuff. The way that I like to clean it though is I do a kind of like a weekly deep scrub on it just because I do cut a lot of onions, a lot of garlic on here and those flavorings can easily get stuck in the wood. So I like to do a mix of salt. So I pour the salt on the board first and then I cut half a lemon and squeeze the lemon juice all over and then kind of rub it in with the lemon. Let that sit a bit. And then what that does is the salt will pull any excess liquid out of the board and the lemon will help to deodorize. So that's both really natural things to do. And then let that sit for a bit, rinse it off, let the board dry out completely. And then I put a butcher block oil on top. So you don't want to dry the wood out too much, otherwise your board will split. So that is my cutting board hack, especially if you have something really nice and wooden. Yeah, exactly. The mineral oil is what you need. Something that is food safe. Hey guys, this rice is smelling really good already just because of whatever spices they put in there. Matt, you had no bones when you showed up. Alvin, thank you. I know, we are killing it today. We're like hovering around 40. I will say though that like midsummer was probably the lowest my numbers have been, but I think that's fair. Because in the summer, people do a lot of different stuff. Like, I don't spend a lot of time inside in the summer. So that made sense to me that the numbers dropped a bit. But it's good to see them increasing again. Excited for the future. Especially now that we are, like, over that 1K follower goal, too. That is still surreal to me. Would have never imagined that I would get here. Okay, there's our ginger. I had to trim it quite a bit. I mean, it was a pretty old piece. Definitely don't want any mold on there. <laughs> Mike's like, oh, gambling. Let me play. You made your mama a wooden cutting board that lasted 30 plus years. Yeah, this board also older than me so i would say it's around the same age as your mom's my grandpa made this so for the ginger i like to keep it pretty chunky and all i do when i'm about to mince it is just make nice thin strips 
Obviously, ginger is pretty strong. So you don't want it too chunky. Then it can like overwhelm your palate in one bite. <laughs> Doesn't look a day over 16 yet. I'm not even legal to drink wine. JPS, thanks for the follow and welcome in. And then I just stack up these little strips of ginger after I cut them and then I make my little slices. I can hear that my rice though is almost done. So our other important step here for the rice is after it's cooked, we need to spread it out as quick as possible and then it will cool down right away if you keep it piled up in a bowl or even in the pot, it's going to keep steaming and then it can overcook really quickly. Lucky me, I have this extra piece of parchment here, so I'm going to use that. Sammy's back salt. Oh my gosh. The tickets are for the salt giveaway. Okay, so how about something like working with dough? Would I move the board? Yeah, that's what I always do. So I always move the board out and just use my counter. Four minutes, Matt. Are you gonna come back though? Because we're doing the giveaway draw at five. You guys have actually only half an hour. Just saying. Once I pour this rice out, guys, I'll show you the salts that we're giving away. Mama, how are you? You probably won't make it for drawing. Well, even if we draw your name, dude, that's it. I'm not going to draw a new winner if the person's not in chat. Can you guys see the little pockets or like holes in this rice. It's like little like volcano spouts almost. So that's exactly what we want. That means our rice is gonna be really nice and fluffy and the kernels, kernels are gonna stay separated. And I'm just gonna turn this ginger and then we're gonna give it a good old chop all the way across. What are those holes? That's what happens when you like boil your rice really high. And this is the Indian method. So I just looked at the bottom. There's no liquid left. I'm going to do turn it off guys. Let me show you what this looks like. So all those little pockets. How cool is that? Cover this. Don't put it on the same hot burner. And then why don't we set a five minute timer and that's gonna just steam the rice a bit and the kernels are gonna separate. Then we'll quickly take it out and pour it out. Okay, so here are the salts. These are made in, I guess, a little salt factory, let's call it, really small operation, nice and local. These are 15 minutes away from me. I went for a little tour one day so two flavors here, sun-dried tomato and basil, sweet and smoky maple. I've used both. They are amazing. I've actually used all four of these. This one is awesome. So good on desserts or coffee. And then lemon infused dill. Awesome with veggies, seafood, chicken, really anything. And they make the salt there on site and they collect the seawater from a nearby beach. Use reverse osmosis to make these amazing sea salts and then use all natural and organic spices and flavorings from around the area. So really, really cool operation. I think whoever wins this is gonna be really lucky. And I look forward to drawing the winner. Whoa, I just saw something about divorce. Ah, mama, it's you. You finalized your divorce today, bittersweet. Yeah, I mean, 
ending something but beginning something even better right so yeah i totally understand that bittersweet and honestly i'm happy for you and the kids of course salt in your coffee you would think that it might be weird on a daily but it's really good and there's cocoa in that mix too so it's like caramel cocoa and salt sweet and savory combo really good Athlete, welcome in or athlete. sherry bird what do you mean they sell the salt for too much so the thing when you make salt is it's really labor intensive and it takes a long time to produce. And that is why salt is not something that is super cheap, especially when it's like handmade. They literally do everything themselves. And personally, as a chef, I totally respect that. And I think it's great to support small local businesses. It's a big thing here on the island. It looks like a margarita pizza. Okay, there's our ginger and garlic, two very important ingredients to go into our fried rice. And all of the veggie add-ins, totally up to you. Whatever you wanna use, or you don't put any. I guess that's okay too, but you might wanna put veggies for digestion. Can I make a keto edition of this meal? I'm sure I can. I don't really know what the keto diet is. I am not huge into those dieting things, but if I looked it up, I'm sure I could make a keto meal. Okay, let's get into our veggies. And I think I'm just gonna put them back onto the tray. That way they'll stay nice and organized. Because some of the veggies need to be cooked more than others like the carrot this is a root vegetable so it's going to take longer to cook keto equals no carbs oh my gosh i don't know how you guys do that then i have a super high metabolism so i have learned that i need carbs otherwise my body likes to store fat if i don't have enough energy to use and this knife yeah, I mean, not really sharpening it, but I have a diamond steel that I use almost every day, I would say, before I use it, and that keeps it pretty sharp. <laughs> Nike's singing for us, guys. is for our rice. I'm just going to pour it out on the stove top. It doesn't look too much different from when we put the lid on though. Maybe a little bit. But let's pour this out. Where is Doggo for the carrots? I don't know what she's doing. Maybe she's sleeping. Just having an afternoon nap. And this rice looks awesome still, guys. Definitely didn't go mushy on us. But it is important that we cool it down really quickly. It smells really good, too. this a try at this point 
and then kind of get an idea of what else I need to add to this when we fry it up later. It might not need that much seasoning since there was already salt and sugar in here. Okay, let's try this. You thought the beeping was here. Yes, I got you, Nike. I have not heard of like having to replace a steel for a knife. I think as long as it's like fully intact, I don't think it really gets broken or gets overused. Those rice kernels are weird. I'm just gonna say it. They're kind of like rubbery. But I guess that's a good thing that they're gonna hold up to when we fry it. There's a good amount of spice in here. So obviously those red pepper flakes are actually chilies. I don't think I'm even gonna add this jalapeno. I really don't think it's needed. But I think the ginger and garlic fresh is definitely needed. So I'm going to keep those two things. Otherwise, nothing like flavoring is really sticking out to me. But it is well seasoned, I will say that. Maybe a little bit of garlic flavor but I am always down with like really garlicky fried rice. So choose whatever you want. You only need a rust eraser to take the particle buildup over time. Huh, interesting. Noted. Ah, the pineapple might stick out too much without the jalapeno. That is true. That's a good point, in dog. I guess we'll see later on. I mean, we could always throw in the pineapple after. Oh, and I wanted to add, okay, camera, relax. I wanted to add some kimchi as well at the end. So that's also spicy, it's homemade. Definitely has a good amount of spice. So I really don't think the jalapenos needed. Okay, so veggies for fried rice. I think they should be pretty delicate when you go to cut them. Maybe like a third of an inch cubes is good. So let's cut down our carrot. I think I might go one more. The end is pretty thin, so I'm not even gonna cut all the way up. And then these pieces. Stir fries are great to work on your knife skills as well. Especially when there's so many different things you can put into them. And then these are like leftover carrot pieces that I wanted to use up. Damascus is only aesthetics. Throw in some habanero. I do have the cutest habanero that I grew. I don't think you guys are ready for this though. <laughs> Look at it. Most adorable habanero you've ever seen. Just say it. You like your fries stirred, not shaken. Imagine if we called it a shake fry. Be like, what? What does that even mean? Name it tiny, take it for walks. You call that grown? It was the first pepper that I picked off of the habanero plant. So it started growing really early. <laughs> Lights entire buttholes on fire with one spoonful. Okay. These carrots that are older, pretty lackluster in flavor. 
I'm gonna say it, guys. Definitely not the best carrots I've eaten. But they're definitely not the worst, either. What is chic fries? What is that? Or do I not want to know? Is it too delicious? Or is it something that I should make? skills if you're making a stir fry that way you could just prep it really quickly totally up to you i mean i've even seen people use like the frozen corn pea and carrot mix in stir fries i think they even came out with like an asian style vegetable mix too in the freezer section that is okay guys if that's what you need to use go for it i'm just gonna wash our radishes up Oh, chicken marsala. I have never made that before, Nike. Which I think is surprising. Actually, one of the first times I had chicken marsala is when Sam and I had a potluck. And you know who made the chicken marsala? Is the guy that makes the aprons, Will. He made such an amazing chicken marsala. I still think about it to this day. Okay, let's cut our ends, tips, or our tips and tops off of the radish. Nike on a daily has a nice obsession. So they definitely know what they're talking about. Yeah, just the tips and tops. Okay, radish. So I guess the fun part is we can cut up our veg in like different shapes. I think I'll do quarters and then maybe little slices. We got a little medley going on. What are the fries called when cut perfect and they look like fish sticks? I think those are called steak cut. Or chips. Yeah, if you're in the UK, they are called chips. I'm keeping the radish pretty big. This is a quite delicate vegetable. It doesn't need that much cook time. It actually is not that strong in flavor either. So that's good. And I think the important thing is just to keep all of your vegetables consistent in size. So if you're cutting small, you have to cut everything small. If you're cutting bigger, cut everything that size. Okay, what should we get into next? Maybe the cabbage. It's not much, but it's enough. I do love a good stir fry cabbage. Guys, 15 minutes to buy any more tickets for the giveaway. The core is already out of this cabbage. Let's do nice chunks again. If I did maybe about half inch thick slices, just do little cubes. Like that. Obviously the cabbage is gonna fall apart. Get something that looks like that. 
what's the site to enter? Use the giveaway command and then that will take you to, right to the page. You got this, mama. I'm just gonna transfer these over to our tray. And we'll fill up the board with more veggies. All right, Trist. Actually, I don't have a stream tomorrow, man. I'm working night shift. I'm cooking at the restaurant. So I won't see you guys until Monday. I know. The struggle. But have a wonderful weekend, Trist. And stay safe out there if you're going for any drives. Scat, you're gonna rewatch for knife skills. I love that. Yes, do that. <laughs> Shadow, no, I know guys. But I'm just really happy that our stream is back in full force at full quality. Uncalled for, I know. Bye, Trist. Is the drawing giveaway today? It is. 15 minutes left until I close the giveaway. Let's get into our peppers. I think I'm going to give a little hone to this knife though. I always know if my knife can't cut through the pepper skin. It's time to give it a few swipes. Peppers and tomatoes, really good test for your knife sharpness. Probably shouldn't have gambled all your bones away. Probably not, man. But you do have quite a few tickets entered. Obviously, the more tickets you buy, the better your odds of winning. I think Lemon has the most tickets entered. She has like 20. Sherry Bird, thanks for the follow. What? Mm. Mama, try this in chat so it's been working for people in chat so do ticket and then a space and whatever number like that obviously i can't enter because i don't have any bones that wouldn't be fair but try it that way in chat and i think that's been working for everyone maybe buy them one at a time Yeah, I use all my bones for stock. Come on now. Try ticket one. Only the dummies gamble it away. <laughs> that doesn't make sense. Hmm. Okay, let me check this out for a sec. Why is it being weird? I can't buy tickets for you guys. That is the only thing is I can only close the giveaway and draw a winner. What the heck? Well, I would like to make it as fair as possible for everyone, but obviously I don't have full control over what technology decides to do. <laughs> Scat. Well, there goes that. Okay, the peppers. Hmm. Should we julienne the peppers, maybe? A little bit of a texture contrast. Yeah, just say your name. <laughs> Mama, you have one. Everyone's like, but she didn't enter. Yes, she did. Scott, 
you don't like bones. Why? I'm gonna eat that piece of pepper. You gotta try your ingredients, right guys? A little bit of munching. These are actually really nice and juicy. I think red pepper is my favorite one. is going to happen all at once. I might par cook the veg just a little bit, so we should do that right away. So it's not good to mix in too much stuff to the rice. Obviously the vegetables can make it soggy. Now you can hear the crispness, it's true. So nice and crunchy. Our beans, look at these wonderful garden beans. I'm just gonna give them a quick rinse. And then I think we'll cut them on the bias. And hopefully we're all done the veggie prep by 5 p.m. ASMR crispness. Yeah, where is Dante? He would be loving all of this chopping right now. So once again, beans, I tip and top them at work just to get rid of that kind of pointy part. But at home, I don't think we need to take that off. Like, mm, actually, maybe these ones we do. It's pretty tough. But usually on the French beans, it's not that bad. And I don't even think I'm gonna use a knife. I'm just gonna use my hands. Tip and top. Oh, we got a string off of that one. You guys ever had beans like this before? Long beans? I don't know if they go by a different name. They're magical. They're gonna turn green when we cook them. They look alien. They are like one of my favorite things just because of the color, obviously. But they are so nice and crunchy and juicy. Are they also known as broad beans? No, that's going to be fava beans. So fava beans and broad beans, same, same. I mean, maybe these go by a different name. Let's see. flat bean Italian flat bean is that what it's called purple Romano beans hmm interesting they grow really well though Okay, let's get into these. I think I'll do, I'll probably do three at a time, but we wanna keep our cuts consistent. So, kind of line them up on a diagonal to start. 
And then just run your knife like that. And do nice little pieces. They're super crunchy. I always get really sad though when the color changes. <laughs> it's like, why can't you just stay purple? Yeah, the color combo. When I'm all about. So they are going to change to like a similar color to what's on the inside. It's not a super vibrant green, it's pretty pale. I wish it was super vibrant. Paleo diet. Man, all these diets that people do, I can't do it. I just eat the food that I want to eat. Obviously, you have to kind of get to know your body, though, and what it likes and doesn't like. I don't know if like one diet is really better than the other. To each their own, once again. I'm sure I would love keto too, just because I do love fats and like cheeses. But I don't know, like I restricted myself a lot for eight months when I did my bodybuilding. And I honestly just can't go back there. It's not worth it. I missed out on so much. Okay, on to our little squashes, which we are going to keep this little flower. I think I'll just give it a little rinse and then put it as a garnish onto our rice since you can eat the squash flour. Welcome in, Death. How is your stream, man? days ago so it's seen better days in a tough time in your life it helped you lose a ton of weight but in the end portion control and good variety is best yeah fair enough i mean everyone's body is different so you have to find what works for you i am going to try and bring the star back to life i'm just going to pour it in some nice cold water save it. You got this flower. You can come back. Did pesto stuffed chicken, vegan bean dish, creme fraiche, and a bacon salad. Hell yeah. Bacon salad. Sounds amazing, man. Oh man. It's time. That was my alarm. You know what time it is. It's time to draw for the giveaway, guys. Quick little pause in our prep. And let's do it. The moment we've been waiting for all month. Who's going to win the salts? Okay. 
Okay. I'll do one more minute if you guys want to purchase any extra tickets. Mama, if you want, try one more time and see if you can buy a ticket. Yeah, good luck, everyone. Here we go. <laughs> tickets, all of them. Try all of them. I don't know why it's not working, guys. What the F? Death, do you know how to fix this? Yeah, this is bullshit. 100%. Okay, so Death bought one. Mama, try again. Mies, you little sneaker. Okay, blow up the chat with tickets. I will do a countdown. You guys have a minute. Mama, I think your thing is rigged and not in your favor. We're counting down. Let's do this. <laughs> Mies is like, oh, you're drawing? I better buy some tickets. Love it. F it. Okay, seriously though, Mama, why is it not working? <laughs> Yeet. Yeet. Oh my goodness. We got 79 tickets purchased, guys. Drum roll. Ah, see, you only have 500 bones. It's a thousand per ticket, but you do have three tickets purchased, so you did okay. Okay, that's it. Timer is up. Giveaway is being closed, and I will draw the winner. So it took your bones, really? The alarm of your nightmares, I know, hey? Okay, giveaway is closing, guys. Oh man, you can no longer enter. Okay, I'm pressing the button, drawing a winner. What? Death, you actually won, man. Death got another package on his way. Yeah, rigged. Man, he only bought three tickets, you guys. Don't worry, there's going to be more giveaways. At least it's not like the apron. I know Death's going to use it, and it's freaking cool because he's going to cook with them on stream, I'm sure. Getting the cookies and the salt. Lemon, you didn't make it in time. We just drew the winner. Congrats, Death. I mean, you have done a lot for my stream, so... I think anything that you get sent your way, you deserve. He lost in viewers and won in salt. I love that. Woohoo! I'm stoked too. I do have a lot more salts that are unopened, I think. So I can do more giveaways, guys. It's definitely not the last one. And I hope everyone had fun for the whole month. Even though I might have started a couple of you onto gambling addictions, I'm not held responsible for that. Yeah, at least we'll see the salt back on stream. Hell yeah, guys. Congrats, Death. This is awesome. Okay, let's get back to it. Amazing. I'm excited. All of these salts will be yours. Boop. Okay. I was just finishing up prepping some squash. We're on to the really yellow part of stream. And I think I have to give him a quick little wash too. That's crazy though, hey Lemon? Like you bought 20 tickets and death wins with a 3.8.
percent chance of winning you never know what could happen guys <laughs> use the salt when he plays fortnite yes Salt and high blood pressure. It's in great hands. Yeah. I'm happy that it's going to get used for sure. Even though I'm pretty sure everyone that entered was planning on using it. So I don't know if that's fair to say. So we have to base the way that we cut our squash off of this little guy. Like, you call that a squash? What is that even? So like, look at it. Kate, the grower of tiny vegetables. I guess I didn't learn anything from the farm. Because <laughs> they grow massive vegetables. Okay. I'm going to do something like that. And this is a summer squash, so you don't have to take any of the seeds out. really good fried up. So this is similar to something like a zucchini. Lemon, were you able to go grab any of the fruits that you were talking to me about? There we go, guys. Beautiful little crook neck squash. And honestly, I don't think I'm going to need the cauliflower and broccoli. This is quite a bit of veg because we still need to slice up our cuke for garnish. We still have the pineapple going in. And then because Thai food is always garnished with tomato and cuke, here are the rest of the cherry toms. Thanks, Adha. No, it looks like a good spread, eh? Cukers from the garden. Woohoo! Finally, something normal sized. <laughs> the cherry tomatoes, I think Betty got from the farmer's market. So, those are still grown locally. Storm, thanks for the follow and welcome in. I think I'm gonna give all of these things, just a little rinse. Even though it is organic, still need to do that. So let's have fun with the cuke today, guys. Let's make it a little bit fancy. It's too steep of a climb down. You took out a broom so you can pull some branches towards you. It wasn't long enough. No. Someone just ditched their Christmas tree in there. So what I'm going to do for the cuke is just do cuts with the peeler like this. Like this is so old school, but you will find this like everywhere in Thailand. It's either this or they actually make the slit in the cucumber. So it kind of looks star shaped. And then we'll do nice little slices like that. So you get the contrast of the skin and no skin. Mm. Super tasty. I know when I first went to Thailand, I thought that the tomato and cucumber was like such a weird thing to garnish the food with like just having it raw on the plate but I really enjoy it it freshens everything up Dante 
I'm like just finishing up the veg. So you're a little late. But don't worry, man. Still got quite a bit of cooking to do still. You found a tunnel someone bushwhacked on the other side of the forest. Do it. Go alone. Just turn your phone on video so that if anything happens, you have proof. <laughs> oh no, come back, tomato. Dante, how are you doing, man? We just cut up all of these things. <laughs> you missed it all. No. You took a video. You're going to send it to me in Discord. Yes. I will hear a lemon voice for the first time. You're watching some footy. Yeah, you missed a lot of chopping, man. Okay, let's break down our pineapple a little bit more. Obviously, we have some pretty inconsistent chunks here. base it off of something like that nice and bite size we don't want to go too small though because then I think it might fall apart when we cook it and I think I'm just going to switch to my paring knife it's a little bit more delicate has ever told me I have piano hands but yeah I have crazy long fingers which is good for cooking too pineapple time I already had a little bit this morning in my smoothie I think we're going to maybe quickly blanch the beans and maybe that's it because I want to fry the cabbage and the radish and the squash so maybe we should fry those things before we do the stir fry as well so we'll do a little bit of veg cookery and then that should kind of lead us in to doing the rest of the stir fry um, now my board is saturated with pineapple juice. Piano masters only teach teenagers with piano hands. Crazy. Yeah, now they just teach kids so young that nobody knows. That is so cool. So they would have chose me, they, you say. I have never really done anything musical. So I don't know if I would be a good piano player anyways. We'll just pretend that I am. <laughs> we'll go with that. Okay, I don't need a super big pot for the beans. I think even this little guy could be good. Or they would have given me a violin. My cousin used to play the violin. He's actually really good at it. We need some boiling 
boiling water. And we also want to salt it a little bit for the beans. Put some flavor into there. How much salt, you ask? I'm probably going to go with like a tablespoon. The beans are super crunchy and juicy, so I always find you need a lot of salt when you're seasoning beans. So I'll wait for that to come up to a boil. And then here is the big cast iron that I'm gonna use to fry the rice in. So no, I don't have a wok, guys, but this gets really hot. So we should be okay. And I'm gonna turn that on now so we can fry up those veg real quick. And I think everything will fall into place. I was planning on using some eggplant in the dish from the garden, but I think it'll make the rice too soggy. So we did not put that in today. Okay, real quick guys, question of the day. Are you ready? Do you enjoy trying out new products that claim to make cooking easier? Like the rice that I used today that pretty much had all the ingredients in it you just have to heat it up and put your meat and veg in or are you kind of skeptical of using those packaged goods because you're scared of what they put into it jalal thank you for the five biddies and welcome in i don't need a walk it's just convenient yeah exactly new lighting nikki's mic mm. No, the sun is just setting earlier, so I have to turn the lights on earlier. One time only, unless it changes your world. That's fair. It's good to try things at least once, for sure. Elvin, you're skeptical? Yeah, I would be too. With someone's recommendations, you would be down. Yeah, that makes sense. Uh, aubergines. I mean, either or. I think in the UK or in Europe, they call it aubergines a lot more. Too many additives. So if there's no additives in this, I know all of the ingredients. So is that something you also look for, I guess, is when you're looking at a packaged food that doesn't take very long to prepare, do you always look at the ingredients? And if you see something that you don't know, is that kind of what pushes you away from that? Let me just get some oil into this pan here. You know what I think I'm gonna use today, guys? Spice things up a bit. Some peanut oil, a little bit of nuttiness. Does every cooking streamer have a question of the day? No, mm, I don't know. I just like to do a little bit of food for thought. I like to keep it food related and find out a little bit more about you guys, I guess. I like to learn. Intro Virtuous, thank you for the follow. So just enough oil in the pan to cover the bottom. I'm gonna leave that out because we're gonna use it later for the stir fry. You guys are skeptical. I like that. That means you really pay attention to what you put into your body. I believe that too, death is like those big companies, they lie. Like they don't have to tell you a lot of how they prepare the food. It's kind of scary. Planters, no way. Yet yeah, who's feeling peanutty? In dog, yeah, food for thoughts. Bad. We're gonna get that pan super hot for those veg so we get a little bit of color on them, but they can still stay crunchy. Hey, Rush, how you doing, man? Welcome in. A 
And then I don't know if I want to play this family style. I think I want to do something a little bit more fancy today. A Cuban cooking segment. I think I did one already. No, I didn't. That is so true. I've never done Cuban. I did Dominican for Liz, but I have not done any Cuban food yet. That's a good request. You're good. That's good, Rush. I hope the fam is well. And are you guys enjoying the last few days of summer before school? You're Cuban cool, so you could give me a bunch of pointers then. Okay, that oil is shimmering. We should hear a nice sizzle when we put our veg in the pan. So, veg that we're browning up, prior, the squash, and the cabbage. And then we can do the carrots and the radish together. Maybe we'll do the squash, the cabbage, and the peppers too. Elvin, you gots to go. Yes, have a wonderful weekend. Crushing it with KO man. Who knows what's gonna happen at the restaurant, but I think I'll do okay. Bye guys, have a wonderful weekend and I'll see you Monday. Okay, let's get this in. We don't wanna overload our pan either. Maybe I'll do the cabbage by itself. If we put too much veg in the pan, it's gonna cool it off too much, and then the veggies are gonna brown. It's just gonna steam over itself. Nike, you're back. Give this a stir. Also, a little bit of seasoning. I'm just gonna do salt, just a pinch or two. Oh yeah, your birthday's on Saturday. What are you guys gonna do, Rush? Do you have any plans? Just opening the window. Starting to fry. Gotta let that hot air out. I gotta go bam. I gotta pull an emerald move. Bam. Okay, let's give another stir. the rice in this. So I'm going to put it into a bowl so it kind of gets molded and then I'll put everything else around. That's my plan of action. Oh, you're going to do a birthday stream. That's awesome. I really like this dish. It's from my grandma. rice in this bowl to mold it that will be good so you don't want to make it too big your little rice mound so that it falls out of the dish so you have to be careful grandmas are the best yeah they are okay one more stir and then i think we're good i think we might be there already Okay, let's make a little bit of room on here. And I'm just gonna pour that back into the pan. Then we can put our cabbage in. I'm not gonna 
do the beans until I'm done this stuff though because they're probably only going to take 30 seconds. Not much time at all. And then spreading this out is going to cool it off too so it's not going to overcook. Did my grandma paint it? I don't believe so. I think she bought that. But she is a really good painter. I'll have to ask her. We might need a little bit more oil just for our cabbage. Grandma. Sometimes I say Gma. <laughs> Gma. She allows it. Yeah. Stir fried cabbage with carrot is like one of my favorite combos. You guys ever do that? And I like when it gets a little bit brown too. Yummy. Yeah, I mean fried rice can be really heavy. So I think adding all these veg to accompany it, it's just gonna lighten it up a little bit. I don't like eating really heavy food in the summer. Keeps you nice and active. The heavy food's for the winter when you don't feel like doing much. I'm gonna get some green onions out right now. You need that for garnish. And they're looking pretty sad, but I do have some chives to use. So we'll bump that up. And then I think that's all we really need. Maybe I'll grab the kimchi too. I know there's a lot of stuff going into this, so I don't want to lose track. I am looking forward to work. I think it's going to be really fun and that's going to be kind of like an intro into what I will be doing during the winter. That we did earlier on stream and then here is the kimchi I'm using so I made this kimchi with daikon radish so it's really nice and crunchy Nike so many bones so many hey this cabbage looks really good let me just try it Get a little bit of salt on there as well. And then we're going to pour it up. And this pan is definitely hot now. So we need our pot holders. Okay. Tidbit smoky. Back onto our pen. Look at that little bit of charred action that we got. I will keep the pan on the hot burner. 
just so it stays nice and warm for us. That way when we go to do the stir fry, we don't have to wait for it to heat back up. Conserve that energy. Yeah, nice char, hey? Now we can bring the beans over to our blanching pot. Like I said, about 30 seconds is all you need since they're already cut them into nice small pieces. That's like your head right now. Oh no, Nike. proper way to blanch would be to put the beans into an ice bath after but since we're going to be cooking them right away I'm not going to do that step I think we can skip it and not really laugh on the quality yeah the autofocus is cray <laughs> goes wild so pretty much when all the beans turn green from purple, those will come out. And I am going to use a little slotted spoon. What effect does blanching have? So blanching gets used a lot in restaurants to kind of par cook the veggies so that they still stay crisp, but they don't take as long to cook. And it can also kind of preserve the flavor. Obviously you need the salted water. It makes things that are green stay more green as well so it serves a couple different purposes doing it with stuff like carrots that take pretty long to cook that will save you time when you go to cook that later on so it kind of helps you time everything out when you go to cook the meal i think that's one of the best things that it does And then we'll chop up our little onion and chive garnish. And then we're pretty much there, guys. Being really good for timing today. And you could always try your vegetables like that to see how it's cooked. Because to me, that is perfect. So I'm going to take it out. And it's nicely seasoned too. I got a nice little hit of salt from our salted water. So isn't that crazy how they turn green from purple? It's like one of my favorite things. And then all we have to cook is the carrot and radish. Super easy. You don't want to be doing a lot of things when you do a fried rice. Just because there's a lot of things to put into the pan so you don't want to be scrambling and I still have to go grab a couple of eggs as well maybe I'll even uh make our little omelet while we're waiting hey nachos how are you I'm going to grab two eggs. I'll be right back. Okay, I'm here. Okay, we just gotta scramble these 
little babes up. I know, shocking guys, we have chicken eggs in the house. I haven't gone to the farm in a couple of weeks, so I haven't gone by the little duck hut to grab the duck eggs. And I'm gonna cook the omelet in this pan since it's still hot. Just put a little bit more oil. And it shouldn't stick. Do you guys like egg in your fried rice or do you think that's like a weird thing to put in? I mean obviously it, it's a cheap way to add extra protein. I mean you can do vegetarian fried rice and use the eggs as your protein source. Oh duck eggs and stir fry. Yeah it would have made it really rich. Duck egg yolks are pretty amazing. You love all eggs. Me too. Eggs are like one of the best, cheapest sources of protein. Obviously the yolks aren't that good for you. But I think two eggs whole is totally okay. I don't have a farm nachos, but I work at, or I volunteer at an organic farm sometimes when I have time. And then on my drive home, there is a property that has a little hut where they sell duck eggs. Six bucks a dozen, it's amazing. Don't want it unless it has eggs, yes. I love that. Okay, I think this is hot already. Definitely the sides are hot. Just wanna spread out my oil. We should get a little sizzle. Definitely want to season this too. There we go. A nice thin omelet. A little bit of salt. A little bit of pepper. And a sammy. And a sammy. I'm not making a mushu pork. What plants and animals do I have at the ready? I mean, not many animals, but a lot of different plants. Gosh. <laughs> We're not cooking gosh. No, we can't cook gosh. And all I do is kind of wiggle my omelet around. Nice. And spread gosh. the egg out. Well, it cooks nice and evenly. I'm just going to leave it in this circular pattern. You shouldn't even have to flip it. It's so thin. Can you not? Guys, did you hear that? What? Did you hear that? That's a barking spider. They're native to DC. I think we told Sammy last week there's no farting on stream. Now the food's gonna taste like poop particles. What's this for? <laughs> That's Matt's car, the yellow one. <laughs> <laughs> He's very proud of it. That was one of like, the cool escorts. I know. Yeah. Hey. Turn this off. We're gonna slide it out onto the cutting board. Are you ready? Yeah, Sammy's wild, guys. You know what? this. You know this. Wild. Boop. Wild. We're bringing in a big corner cap in for tomorrow in here. Okay. So what I usually do, guys, Make it back into the circular pattern if you can. Try not to drop it on your feet like I did. Mm, that's really good tasting. And I just roll it up and then slice it. Uh, maybe we'll do half just so the strips aren't as long. We 
sure we have nice egg pieces and it's not just all mixed into the rice. Do you guys ever do this or you just scramble your eggs right in? Okay, let that chill out. Next thing, I suppose we should start frying the pork. And then while that's frying, we can cut up our onion garnish. So I think we can fry the pork prior to making the fried rice and then just take it out of the pan. It will stay hot. At least I think so while we do the fried rice. a little pan to put the cooked stuff in afterwards. So once again, I'll turn this bad boy on. A good medium high heat is what we're going for. And now I can transfer all of our veggies over as well. It's almost go time, guys. We should get out the soy sauce, the fish sauce if you want oyster sauce as well. Maybe a little bit of rice vinegar. If you're feeling fancy, you can do a little bit of sesame oil to season. Don't do this till the end though. Like this isn't something you cook with. I always garnish with this just because it's really delicate and nutty. If you get it at too high of a heat, it will burn and make everything taste really bad. Yeah, good to know, hey Scott? I feel like some people make that mistake and then they're like, why does this taste so weird? That could be why. Okay, this is still hot. Let's do this. I think I might do two batches. Just because I really want to brown it. good. So we only put a little bit of that seasoning spice in before we ground it. So let's season our pork now as well. I'm just going to do salt and pepper. I don't want to put soy sauce in because that's going to affect how the meat browns. So nothing wet should go into your pan right now. <laughs> You're guilty of that, Scott. Well, see, at least you learned something new. Okay, R.I.P. Green Onion, I think, pretty much. <laughs> I maybe should have packaged it a little bit different. It was my fault, Green Onion, that you died. So trim your roots off. And I'm just going to trim off all of this soggy stuff. Oh, there might be a little bit we can use. <laughs> it doesn't smell like poop particles. I always bug him. Poop particles are in the air. Forever unclean. Forever. see what's going on over here. Not that much browning action. And give this a stir. Definitely a fine line between 
between getting a good brown on your ground meat and overcooking it. So personally, I think I'd way rather cook the meat properly than get it completely browned. So thinly slice the bottom of our onion to nice little rounds. Like the flavor of green onion or scallion on fried rice, you can't beat that. won't even be the same. It's another thing I hate is when you chop the green onion, but your knife, either your knife doesn't go through all the way or your board is warped. It just like half chops it. The worst worst guys okay that's not quite enough just got a little bit of chivers one more stir on our pork Smells really good. It's almost there. Move over, onion. We have a duo of onion today. Okay, definitely have a warped board. sizzle that we want on the pork. So I think I might have still put too much in at first. You want like a really thin layer when you go to brown your meat. Obviously if you pile it up it's just gonna steam. No thanks. Okay there we go guys. Let's go back over. I'm crying a little bit from that onion. Not gonna lie. The pork just needs a little bit more salt. Good rush. Yes, see you on Monday and have a wonderful birthday. Enjoy the weekend. I love that red hot burner. It looks so ominous. Scrape all those good bits off. Okay, in with the next.
were looking good, guys. I would say T minus 15 minutes until we're done. And we are literally ready to rumble. All of the things are laid out for us. It just needs to be assembled. Just scrolling on belly to see who's on. Wonder if vegan chick stays on, then we'll probably go raid her. Unless you guys have any other recommendations. I'm always down for that. You know this. The other thing that I'm trying to use up, Rook, you're back with food. What do you got? Is if you guys know what Nwok Sham sauce is, you usually get it at like a Vietnamese restaurant. It's like a really nice fish sauce, lime and chili dipping sauce. This is going to be awesome to use to season our fried rice. Chef should be on soon. Ah, that is true. Well, hopefully he gets on before I end. But I think we raided him last time, so we might have to spread the love elsewhere. We will see. When are we making nachos? Oh my gosh. Well, we just had nachos last week, I think, when we ate out. So maybe in a couple of weeks we'll make some nachos. Got a good pot of pintos, sausage, bacon, and some tortillas and the hot sauce. Yum. Sounds delicious, dude. Cook, pork, cook. You're, sna you're snacking on pickled beets again. Send help. There are definitely worse things to snack on, Nike. I think you're okay, man. I think you're okay. Patiently waiting now, my friends. And you know what? I think I'll take my other bathroom break. What did I crush? Like two bottles of water already on stream? I'll be back. Make sure the pork doesn't burn. I'm here. I am here. Hi, I am here, chef. Y'all know me. Quick bathroom break. Let you know when I'm making nachos. Okay, I will. I will, I will. And today on Cooking with Kate, the food cooks itself. <laughs> Magic. Magic, I tell ya. Okay, we didn't season this batch yet, did we? Nope. Definitely need some salt. And 
pepper. And then this stuff is cooked. So we'll pour it out and then it's time to fry up our ginger and garlic. And then onward with the fried rice. Clean this out as best as you can. Obviously you don't want any burnt porky bits. Okay, we didn't get a ton of oil out of that pork. So let's just add a little bit more. A literal bag of human garbage. Thank you for the follow and welcome in. So just a touch more peanut oil. Use small amounts at a time and you should be good. Now it's gonna get real fragrant in here. Yum. Honestly, one of the best smells. Fried ginger and garlic. Maybe a touch more oil. Yeah. Rook, you're going to bed early, man. That's good. I think you need that rest. You've been working like crazy. Okay, I'm gonna throw the carrots and the radish in. We don't wanna completely brown the ginger and garlic. I would take it about halfway there. Give it a good stir. What is happening? And make sure everything is nicely spread out because then it's just going to fry a lot better. Kind of build it in layers, I guess. He's working his butt off. Yeah, he is. <laughs> Thunder, what? I'll just pretend like that didn't happen. Clink it. Thanks for the host. Katna. Welcome in. Thanks for the follow. I do love radishes, especially when they're fried. Sammy Schnitzen. You guys see that okay? Yeah. I'm just gonna turn up the hood vent Good stuff. a little bit. Mole near, please. Rook, where are you at? We got a wild one. the smaller you cut your veg for your fried rice, the quicker it's going to cook. <laughs> Rook was getting more food. Priorities. I understand, man. You guys got to eat. I think a couple more minutes on that veg. We don't want it too crunchy in the rice. A little bit of bite, though, just so you can differentiate.
perfect, guys. So now in with the rice. I don't know if I'm gonna do this whole pan. You don't wanna overload, otherwise it's not gonna fry. Glass of whiskey, welcome in. Yeah, there's a burglar. Watch out, guys. The dang sauce is out. What sauce are you using? our egg and the pineapple too. So the pineapple is going to add a little bit of liquid and sweetness to offset that spice. Hope you guys can see all those colors. Maybe half a spoonful per serving. That's crazy rough. Don't know how you do it, man. Really don't. Okay, I think I'm gonna turn this off. Nicely fry it up. We don't gotta cook the egg at all. I think I'm gonna bring it over just so we can kind of season it together. I'm also taking it off the heat. We're gonna somewhat stop it from cooking. So there we go, guys. So nice and colorful. 
Our rice kind of wants to stick to the bottom, but you can still easily scrape it off. Give this a try, maybe with one of the veggies. Okay, what we need, I think at least, a little bit of fresh lime juice. One dish you get all the time going to a Thai place, I would probably say green curry and maybe pad thai. So there's a little bit of acid. I think we might need a touch more. So I'm just gonna put in a little bit of rice vinegar. We have a bunch of Thai places, but you've never been to them, Rook? What are you waiting for, man? Definitely need some soy sauce. Chicken, oh, like a chicken saute with peanut sauce, yes. See, that's something I would rather make myself though. Like making a green curry takes a lot of effort, I find, to try and get the paste right and all that. Whereas making saute is a little bit easier, at least for me. This is some fish sauce. We don't need too much, otherwise it'll make it too fishy. And these liquids should help to lift that rice off the bottom too. I don't know, I'm a big fan of the crispy rice on the bottom of the pan. Let's see how we're doing. Oh, a hot pot. Yes, Sammy. Oh, that's going soon. Oh. Rook, that is so much fun. Okay, more soy sauce. It's pretty shocking how much rice needs the soy sauce. Crazy amounts to season it properly. And then lastly, all I'm gonna do, a little drizzle of the sesame oil. I always smell it first too, just cause sesame oil is super delicate. Anything nutty like this, it goes bad pretty quick. It's always good to check that first that it's not rancid. And hopefully all of these did the trick. But look, our rice is not falling apart. Even with all of the things we added in, you're not really a people person. Neither am I, Rook. Neither am I. But somehow all of you are lovely. Mm. I think that's honestly perfect. Good amount of spice though. I will say that. Keep coming back to that spice because I wasn't expecting that. And all of that spice was just in the mixed bag that we used in the rice. So kudos for Tilly's Galley for actually coming through with that spice. Usually companies don't make packaged stuff that spicy because they want it to appeal to the general population. And I am going to be forming a little fried rice mound. That's why I'm filling this bowl. <laughs> yeah, Rook, you're all right, man. You're all right. I think the pineapple is definitely going to offset that spice, though. So keep that in mind. Okay, I think we're good. The bowl is full. Go, go, go. Switcheroo. We got our onions there ready for garnish as well put a little bit of pork on the bottom and then also a little bit of our pork on top. 
Maybe like half and half. Make a nice bed. And then hopefully we can flip this. Is it gonna work, guys? Green curry is pretty mild. Okay, are we gonna be able to flip this without destruction? Probably not. Just pat it down one more time. Maybe we shouldn't have put the pork in because then how are we gonna flip it? Pray for the best. Ready? We can do this. Okay, we have one little piece of egg that escaped, but I'm feeling good. Yahas! We'll just eat that. Pretend like that wasn't there. Mm. The egg is so nice and moist. It's not like dry and overcooked. A little bit more pork on top, I think. Because it is pork and pineapple fried rice. That is fair. Come through with the veg. Like I said, we're gonna let the residual heat warm this up. Cukers, which is an important part of Thai cuisine as a garnish. And some nice fresh tomatoes. How many vegetables did we even use today, guys? Excessive amount. But look how great that looks. Lastly, our green onion. The middling chain that you always go to. Yeah, go to a legit Thai restaurant. Honestly, the food is so good. And I will serve the kimchi on this side. What do we think, guys? Would you eat this? Yes or no? Yum. Okay, I'm just gonna go take a quick photo and then I'll have a bite of a little bit of everything together. We did it, fam. would gladly pay for this. Love you, vegan gelada. Four to five different veggies and two fruits. Yes, Ziggy. Okay, let's get in here. This is the best part. Thanks, Rook. I like to play with my food. The pork is perfect. It's not dry. I think I had a little bean in there with that scoop and maybe some cabbage. Let me go in for a little bit more. I have some of the squash and radish in here this time. Mm. I love how crunchy everything is still. Okay, important part. Some of the pork with the pineapple. 
What's with the plastic spoon? These are just my tasting spoons that I use. The pineapple just pretty much bursts in your mouth with its juices. It's so good. And then obviously the tomato and cucumber raw will help to cleanse your palate if you find that it gets too spicy as you keep eating it. I like colorful things, Nick. Okay, we crushed it. Good job, guys. Thanks for all the love today. And congrats to death for winning the salt giveaway. Woohoo! Oh, what? Yep, yeah, he only entered three tickets. He won with 3.86% chance. Wow. Crushed it. That's awesome. Okay, guys, we're going to go raid someone. Vegan is off. Let's go say hi to Chef. I think he's starting right away. If not, I'm sorry. Let's do this. I will drop you guys there. Whatever you decide to do, do it up. Okay. Have a wonderful night, guys. Thank you for all of the love today. Lots of new follows. We got some biddies as well. You guys are still crushing my goal. And thanks for the awesome week. We are back stronger than ever. I'll see you on Monday for the next stream. Good night. <laughs> Vune, no. <laughs>